Hi, so uh, my name's uh, Damien Black. I'm the CEO of a company called SQL Stream. And if any of you guys have heard of us before, um, we uh, have been uh, awarded a couple of awards uh, this year um, in the 100 companies that matter most in data. So along with some, some big names like Google, Amazon, and Cloudera. And most recently, the Ventana Research Award for um, Performance and Analytics. And that's the award that Splunk uh, won last year. So we are kind of like uh, this year's Splunk. What we provide is um, big data over high, um, streaming analytics over um, high velocity big data. And I'll explain what that means. So um, if you look at, um, if you have a lot, of, a lot of information that you want to process, whether it's in uh, machine data form, whether it's um, log files, streaming sensor data, service data, data coming from devices. More and more these days, people want to get real-time insights into the information. So it's a problem not only of the sheer volumes, but also the, 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 um, the, rapidly, the rapid um, rate of arrival of the data. So it's a problem of velocity as well. And then it's a problem of getting to actionable in insights you know, within realistic time frames. So what we do is we basically ingest all of the data. We, 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 we suck it in from whatever source it comes. It can be pushed in. It can be pulled in. And we transform the raw data, parsing it and processing it and generating information, valuable information, which you can then visualize through uh, visualization technologies of your choice or technologies that we actually provide as well. And the way we do that is by running SQL queries continuously over streaming data. What we are is a streaming data platform. It's true standard SQL right up to the 2011 standard. And what we, the way that that works is the queries run continuously over live streaming data, and the results stream out incrementally without first storing the information. So we buffer all of the data in the main memory of servers, and we index it on the fly, and we reclaim the space on the fly. And you can create any number of derived output streams, and then you can materialize and store those in your databases, data warehouses and Hadoop. And then you can also use those same stored data sources to enhance and enrich the data as you go. So what we do is you know, real-time analysis and real-time integration of data. So uh, it's great if you like uh, Informatica and you've been working with them for decades, but you know, this is a much more uh, state-of-the-art technology. If you look at what it looks like, I've put a simple query up here just to show how easy it can be. And this, this query basically will, if you have a, um, two streams, and say it's a, from log file format, or it may be a system is inserting them through JDBC directly into a server. Um, we have a stream of orders and a stream of shipments. We simply join the orders against the, strip of the shipments over a one-hour rolling window. And that will tell you those shipments that are shipping you know, within a one-hour service level agreement window. Very simple, very straightforward, and this thing can process, well, probably about, you know, around a million records per second um, on a four-core commodity server. And I'll come on a little bit about performance in big data in a minute. So the key concepts here are that we're actually processing the data on the fly. We parse it. We hold the information in the main memory of servers, and we process it, push it through any number of continuous, continuously executing queries, and we stream out results. And for those of you that like Java, you can use, um, in our case, you can use SQL or Java as first-class languages. You, you, it really depends on what's uh, better for you. SQL has the benefit of being automatically optimized, as people understand. If you look at the architecture, then, and how we actually work this um, in, in conjunction um, with systems like Hadoop, so what we have is all of the classical pieces that you might expect within a database system, query planning and optimization. Uh, you have the uh, ingest layers, adapters and agents. Agents allow you to push data in. Adapters pull the data in from the server. Standard JB, JDBC, and then adapters to stream stuff out straight into, into Hadoop. Hadoop really is a stream, stream storage platform. Um, in Hadoop, you, know, you can't transact data very easily, but you can append to streams. You can materialize streams and it can handle massive scale. You can analyze those uh, stored streams, those files, those sequences, uh, with MapReduce jobs, or you can use it using, in fact, SQL Stream, where you replay the data. For example, if you want to calculate predictive analytics to detect what is a good prospect for a, um, 
what, what is a good customer prospect based on their service behavior on the web, then you may want to process that with many different scenarios of different rules and find out which ones actually give the best uh, predictive behavior. So we stream out um, the information into Hadoop, we can replay those streams and we can enrich the streams in real time. And so Hadoop and SQL Stream provide the real time and the historical processing working hand in hand. If you look at the history of, of data management and see where it all came from, it's interesting to see what happened. Um, it, first of all, in the stored data um, um, arena, we started off with key value paired stores with index files way back in the 60s, quickly went on to hierarchical databases, and then threw into the relational database uh, model. And now back in, in the big data era, we basically started off again with key value pairs, but this time massively distributed. And now finally with Google BigQuery and Impala and a number of other technologies, SQL is coming back to the fore. And the reason that SQL is coming back, it's so popular, not only are there millions of people and applications that are familiar with it, but also it is automatically optimized. So you can deal with high level queries and let the system worry about how to tr translate that into parallel execution. In the streaming world, there was a similar hierarchy uh, going on where we started off with simple point to point network pipes on into hierarchical messaging middleware. And then finally, the streaming approach allows you to create relational queries over those streams so you can get any view of information that you want. You can decide, I want to see these records joined by these are other records enhanced in this particular way, aggregated over some period of time, and just give me the, the fields that I care about, and it will deliver you the stream that you want. So how does that translate into, into some sort of performance advantage? Well, three sort of key big data technologies that we're going to see now, I think, for the next decade or so, really um, comprise, first of all, uh, we had relational databases, now we have Hadoop, and stream processing is now coming to the fore. And there are a number of technologies, there are open source technologies, and of course, uh, SQL Stream has been doing this. We started our development in around 2003 and brought product out in 2008. It's about one and a half million lines of code, so it's a, a non-trivial uh, engineering effort. If you compare that to Storm, which uh, is probably around 20,000 lines of code, this is a pretty big, uh, big engineering effort. So if you look at this particular diagram, what we have is latency going into the, into the, into the picture. We have a velocity of data and we have the total cost. And if you look at the swim lanes, at each swim lane we go forward, we're basically are going up in an order of magnitude of volume. So in social media, order of magnitude higher, e-commerce transactions, order of magnitude higher, security event data, and then onto telematics, that stuff that streams off all of equipments and sensors, the Internet of Things, and then telecom, which carries all the traffic. And um, if you look at these various different technologies, obviously streaming, um, Hadoop is a higher latency than relational databases, which are much higher latency than stream processing. You get some very interesting uh, different behaviors, though, in terms of the cost. Hadoop, relational databases and Hadoop, there's a knee that comes in as you try to basically reduce the latency, you'll find this kicks up sharply. And um, it kicks up sharply for relational databases as well. Um, the costs of Hadoop are lower than relational databases. It's on commodity hardware and the software is less expensive. But stream processing has a different cost profile and the question is why is that? And the real reason is it's performing everything incrementally. And to give a simple example, imagine you were running a telco and you wanted to look, think about, I want to know in real time, what is the average length of an internet session? And I stored every record as it came in, every internet session, every time you clicked on a browser for all of your customers. So you store all of those records and you store them in a database or in Hadoop, but let's just take the database example. Every time a new record comes in, you want to adjust the average, you have to recompute. Maybe there's a billion records you've got to sum up, you've got to count them, and the combination will give you what the average is. So you have, if you have a million records coming per second, then you have um, a million times a billion. That's a, you know, a thousand trillion operations per second. Doesn't matter how fast your database, data, database is, it's gonna be very slow. And the same thing happens with Hadoop. You've gotta traverse the data over MapReduce. In the stream processing approach, the query is running continuously. It's maintaining, therefore, an, a total sum and a total count, and it will continually uh, compute the result. And we can compute that result a million records per second of the same analytic in, say, a four-core commodity server or your laptop. 
A couple of examples um, of SQL Stream in action. Some, some of you may have seen the download stats, Mozilla Glow. If you Google YouTube Mozilla Glow, you can see it's in action there. You can't see it very well on this projector, but it says powered by SQL Stream. That was basically giving real-time analytics for Firefox downloads and loading uh, HBase. You also can see us in Australia where we actually give real-time analytics on the traffic network so that people can see what's happening truly in real time and they're able to put in their own alerts and analytics to detect particular situations such as emergencies that are happening on the road network and it's just a matter of adding a couple of SQL queries rather than adding in, you know, processing perhaps millions of lines of some hard-coded uh, traffic sensor, traffic management application. So finally, the conclusions here are, um, you know, what we have is some complementary technologies. Hadoop processing your stored streams, SQL Stream and other streaming technologies processing continuous streaming data, and then combining them together, you get real-time insights, real-time analysis, real-time ETL, cleaning, validation. At the same time, you can use Hadoop to do things like sensitivity analysis, scenario analysis, and detecting and calculating the kind of predictive algorithms that you want to use in your real-time environment. And that is the end of my 10 minutes. I'd be very happy to take questions outside. Thank you very much for your time and interest.